Hello and welcome to this AIM Academy tutorial on how to download your data using the Race Studio 3 software. Before we get into actually connecting a device and downloading the data, the first thing we want to do is be able to configure the Race Studio 3 software for data download. To do that, we click up here in the top left hand side and uh, just slightly down from the top you'll see data download. Now this will give you a series of options to be able to configure not only where that data is downloaded to but what type of information is gathered which will just make your life easier in terms of managing your data and managing the download process. The first thing on this uh, screen that we have here is the root folder for download. This is where uh, Ray Studio 3 will save the data file that uh, or the session uh, that you have and, and one of the things you'll notice is that uh, yours may look different to this. Um, AIM does have a default location, it's associated in the same file as all of the information for Race Studio 3. However, I've changed uh, the location here to be able to not only download the data into a nominated folder, uh, uh, the one that I have here is called AIM Racing Data, but also you can see that this one's uh, connected to a cloud service. Here I'm using uh, OneDrive from Microsoft, but you could use any of the cloud services. What this means is that while there will always be that file located on the laptop I use for racing, it also means that as soon as this laptop is connected to the internet, that file will not only be backed up in the cloud, but it will also mean that I can access that file and all the associated files uh, with that session um, on any other machine that is also connected to OneDrive that also has uh, the AIM Race Studio uh, analysis software. So a very useful feature to be able to make sure that you back up your files. You don't need to do this, but one of the things that I do recommend uh, is to do this because we start to amass a huge amount of data files over time. Now the next thing is to be able to nominate how you want that folder to look. And these are the folders um, that you'll have, um, obviously in addition to AIM Race Studio data, what additional information is gathered. I just have date connected and the reason I have date attached here is that um, I can refer to my notes say what was I doing on the 1st of August 2020 um, and I can then just go and find the associated data files but you can specify additional information especially if you're capturing information from different drivers so you could say the date stays the same but then there's a subfolder within that for multiple drivers that are there or vehicles or championships so a lot of ways of being able to work with your data. Um, in this instance, we just have date ticked that is here. The next is a file name. So what information is captured uh, within that file name itself? And so in this instance, uh, we're capturing date and time, the racer, the vehicle, the track, and the venue type. And we'll talk about those in more detail, but you can add in lots more information to be able to make sure that your file structure is how you want to be able to see it. To demonstrate what that actually looks like, I actually have a file here on uh, the desktop that demonstrates that information. You've got your date, you've got your driver, you've got your vehicle, you've got your track, and you've got your venue type. And so all of that information is housed within the file that is captured um, when the data is downloaded. Useful for sort functions, for just being able to have quick reference to the file location. But here's one thing that's really important. You should always make sure that you have date and time uh, ticked. The reason being is that it is highly likely in some instances that the same racer will drive the same car at the same track multiple times. And if they do it in qualifying or they do it in race, when that file is saved, sometimes it's very difficult for that file to have a very, to have a different file name. Every time you race by having date and time added to that particular file name, the file will be unique. And it'll be unique based on the fact there's only ever one given point in time when you're on track, one date. And so it'll always mean that each file is unique. And so it's important to make sure that's always ticked uh, that is there. Uh, word of caution would be don't untick it if it's already there as part of the default setting. So that's the setup so far for where the data is going to be downloaded. Same applies for downloading um, movies. If you want to be able to do that from a Smarticam HD, uh, we're going to leave this one uh, for now, but we're going to move across to the download venue types. Now, this is specific to the type of racing that you do. And when you go in and download your data, sometimes there's lots of different se uh, sessions that are there. Um, in any given race weekend, um, in some championships, you may have qualifying race race. Um, in some uh, instances, you may have a weekend. So you have 
uh, a practice day, a practice, official practice, then a qualifying, uh, then a race, and maybe a second race. And so depending on how you race, you can nominate which venues are there. Now, this is useful later on as we download the data, and I'll show what that looks like. But for this particular instance, we have uh, generic testing, we have uh, race, we have first or second race if there's two in a weekend to choose from, um, and uh, we also have qualifying set up as well. But there's all sorts of different variables here, and you can also um, change the name or specify some of the information of these two. So just important to know. Now, right now, this may not have context, but as we get to downloading the data, we'll uh, look at that. The last tab on here is advanced. This means that uh, you know, you're just specifying um, what's happening as it downloads um, the sessions. Skipping selection of one only lap sessions is very useful if any of you have a device that triggers a session for one lap because you're moving from your paddock space to the pre-grid, for example, or where you line up. You may have like half a lap or a lap there. This just skips being able to download those files. And also auto select downloaded files just means it's easier to find the files that you haven't downloaded. And this is always going to be unique to the machine you download uh, the data to. So if it's already present on this machine, it won't prompt you to download that again, but you can unselect that later. Last thing here is just giving, um, you know, the option of additional export formats uh, that will be there. For example, if you have some balance of power requirements that uh, are, are, are specified, uh, this Sports Car Club of America specifications may specify that. In addition, the one that I do like to see very often is the uh, Google file. Now, downloading that Google file creates a file immediately that you can upload to Google Earth to be able to do your lap analysis, uh, which we featured in a previous video, which we'll link to um, in the top right hand side of this video. So that's your data setup. Um, and it's important to do that because uh, it means that when you get to downloading your data, it's easier to be able to do it. Now, I have a machine already connected. I have an AIM Solo 2. Uh, that's connected to the Wi-Fi network of, uh, of of my house right now in terms of doing this tutorial video. If you want to know how to do that or connect your device by Wi-Fi, please click in the top right hand side to the video that helps you understand how to connect to Wi-Fi. Whether you're access point, whether you're on a network, all you need to do is click on the device that's connected to the network. And what you'll find is that it will present you with this information. Now, before you download this data, there's one more thing that might be interesting to set up to save you even more time. Now, this is particularly applicable if you're the only driver or the regular driver of a vehicle that either has the AIM Solo 2 or has, um, if it's just a portable device or whether it's a permanently mounted dash. And to do that, if you scroll across here to Wi-Fi and properties, you can put in the information that is here. So if I said, for example, that this is AIM uh, Racer, the vehicle number is AIM12001, uh, championship is um, uh, racing cars, and uh, we'll leave venue type alone, we'll talk about that in a minute. When you transmit this to the device, this means that every time you download data, you will have this information already pre-populated. So let's look at that in more detail. So we've done all this setup and everything's ready to go. What we need to do is to click on download. So if we click download here, there are some files that are available. Uh, now, chances are when I download these files, it may not pre-populate the name of the driver because it's usually logged at the time when the data file is recorded. But you can see there's a couple of sessions here. Notice that it's not ticked the one lap file because we asked it not to. And it's also um, not showing me all the data that is, um, is or has already been downloaded. To uh, see that data again, just click unhide downloaded uh, and it will show up um, and you'll see already downloaded there. I'm going to click hide downloaded because I've already downloaded those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on download here. Now, if you remember earlier, one of the things that we specified was, um, you know, the, uh, the detail that was associated um, with that information. So uh, what we've got in this situation is pre-populated information that was in the device at the point of download. So I'd had specified the vehicle, I'd had specified uh, the championship and the venue type and the track. Now these pre-populate for you to be able to speed up your experience. One of the things that it tends to do, which is why you saw some different names that are in there as we're looking at downloading this data, is that oftentimes the system will remember the last time that data was downloaded and use that. Um, the one thing it won't do in terms of previous 
is in this venue type. Now, if you remember earlier, I was talking about the fact that you may race, you may qualify race race, or you may have generic testing or one race, which is typically the setup that happens with this device itself. One of the things you can see here is that you have um, each of those that is here. It means you don't have a list of a thousand or so, <laughs> a thousand, that's a bit generous, let's say 25 or 50 different venues to sort through. You can just specify a, a different piece of information that is here. You can drop in your comments and then you can download the data. And if I said this is a test download and uh, this is all the information I want to capture, uh, it'll also remember uh, the last information that was also stored and it'll remember additional information that's been stored on the download, especially if nothing's been pre-populated. You'll notice it doesn't say aim racer. That's because I changed the configurations after these data files were captured. Uh, but in many instances, if I now click on OK, that's going to download the data. First pass will be in a sort of blue color and then go to green. Once green is done and the, da the data is downloaded, that file is now downloaded and it will be ready and available for you to use in the Race Studio Analysis software. Uh, so it's there for you to be able to use. Now, it doesn't matter if you happen to be using um, an AIM Solo 2, an MXL2, an MXM, any of the Wi Fi type of devices that exist, or you happen to be using an Evo 4S or any solution that you require a USB plug. If your device uses Race Studio 3 to download, as long as these two little arrows are illuminated and there are devices here, this process of download and setting up your specific variables is always going to be the same. So that's really um, you know, the key components. Now, if you have an older device like an AIM Solo, an AIM MXL, you may need to use Race Studio um, 2 to be able to download your data instead. This is what the icon looks like. And uh, if that happens to be the case, there are great tutorials that are available online elsewhere to be able to give you that information. So that's it for this video. Please give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please also leave a comment below if you want to let us know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. There's a lot more content to come. Thanks for watching.